Tom Barkin uh, uh, to, to continue this discussion. Uh, Tom, thanks so much for joining us. Great to be with you, Steve. Yeah, I'm sorry I'm not in Richmond. We'll have to do that next time to that great city you got there. Uh, but l let's start with the jobs numbers. Uh, as I was saying before, and I, I'm interested in your take on this, obviously, uh, the unemployment rate did go up, but you still got a higher than expected number uh, that, than the street was estimating, and you did have upward revisions to the prior month. H how do you as a Fed official, as a Fed, Fed president and policymaker, uh, digest this report this morning? Well, it's about what I expected. It's pretty consistent with what I hear from contacts, which is that demand remains solid. Uh, the labor market remains tight. And, you know, you can point to the unemployment rate. You can point to wages. We're not getting much help on the supply side. Participation ticked down. And uh, I just think firms are still holding on to workers. If you've worked hard for the last year or two years to try to get your staffing back up to complement, it's uh, quite a, quite a um, change in approach to say you're going to have uh, fewer. And so I do think the market remains tight, and that means there's still more work to do. Tom, walk us through your thinking about the connection of a tight labor market and inflation. Do you believe right now that wages are indeed driving inflation, or is it your concern about a potential wage price spiral that motivates you to look for a softer job market? Well, I'm trying to think about demand more broadly. Jobs are obviously an important part of it. It may well be that uh, jobs, as I was suggesting a second ago, are more of a lagging indicator uh, this cycle. So all of the elements of demand, I think, are relevant. Uh, consumer spending, which we got a couple weeks ago, all of that is relevant to what's happening uh, on the demand side. And I do think uh, firms have uh, gotten a taste of increasing prices. They've started to increase prices. They still have, in many cases, cost pressures, margin pressures. Uh, and as you can see in some of the more recent announcements, there's still a sense that uh, prices still have a room to go. And I think it's going to be hard for people who have fought hard to increase prices to back off until they get uh, that kind of signal from either their uh, customers or their competitors. And I think firms are still waiting uh, to hear that. And that's why we're not seeing much movement uh, down on inflation. Tom, from the department of what, what have you done for me lately, uh, you just raised 75 basis points. Are you ready to start thinking about or talking about what kind of increases we might see in the future? I guess we need to ask you, do you see future increases at the December meeting? Uh, can you see, as, uh, uh, as Susan Collins was just talking about, the idea of potentially stepping down? Well, we'll have a lot of information before December, uh, two more CPIs, a PCE, another jobs report, a bunch of demand indicators. So I'm not sure I know exactly what we're going to do in December. But I think um, the way I think about it is we had our foot on the gas uh, six or eight months ago. We were uh, very, very accommodative. And it made sense to move as rapidly as you could uh, to take your foot off the gas. And that's what we've been. I think now real rates are positive pretty much across the curve. And so I think you could credibly say we have our foot on the brake. And I think when you've got your foot on the brake, uh, you just think about steering in a very different uh, way. Um, you pump the brakes uh, sometime. You act a little bit more uh, deliberatively. And I'm ready to do that. Um, and I think the implication of that is probably a slower rate of pace, pace of rate increases, a longer pace of rate increases, and potentially a higher uh, endpoint. So in, in light of that higher endpoint, President Barkin, um, how are you thinking about a higher terminal rate and what that could potentially look like? And I realize we're still waiting on a lot of data here. Well, I think about it in terms of what happens to inflation. The faster that inflation settles down uh, to levels that I'm comfortable with, uh, the less far I think we need to go. But if it were to persist and continue, I think we'd have to you know, continue to take action to make sure that expectations stay in line and inflation comes back toward our target. So to me, it's very dependent on what happens to inflation. Um, this might be a little backward looking in a sense, but given the strong October we've just come off of uh, with stocks and the fact that it coincided with the rally, so much of that rally coincided with the media blackout period for the Fed ahead of the meeting we just had. Why do you think there has been this push-pull, dare I say, disconnect between the equity markets and what officials such as yourself and Chair Powell and others have been saying and saying pretty consistently for a number of months now about this <coughs> tightening cycle? I don't know. I think you guys are much better at describing and understanding the <laughs> equity markets than I am. I I look at my comments and those of the chair and those of my colleagues over the last month, two months, three months. I, to me, they seem very, very uh, consistent. So I'm, I'm not sure if you think there's a misunderstanding. I'm not quite sure uh, what would be behind that. 